Hello, in this tutorial I'm going to talk about data types and variables um, in C Sharp. So um, we'll look at how to store data in variables and also the different types of data that we can use in the C Sharp language when scripting um, for Unity games. So a data type basically classifies various types of data. So there are different data types like string, integer, float, and boolean. And each of those data types dictate um, what the accepted values are for that data type, the different types of operations that can be performed on that type of data, um, the meaning of the data, and the way that that um, data can be stored. So um, the main data types that are available in the C-sharp language are integer. Okay, so the integer data type stores positive or negative whole numbers, like a simple number, like the number five or number 10. Um, a float data type stores floating point numbers, so numbers with decimal places like 5.25 or 7.8. Um, and the float data type is the default number type in Unity. And it's the data type that you'll probably be using a lot for um, scoring, um, or for movement of objects and characters, um, okay? There's also the double data type, which also stores floating point numbers, but it's able to store or hold larger size numbers and floats, um, but it's not the default number type in Unity, though. Another data type is Boolean, so, um, or bool um, in C Sharp, which is short for Boolean. Um, so that stores only two possible values, true or false, so... Um, a value can be true or a value can be false. Okay, there's char. Um, so the char data type, which is char is for, short for character, um, that can store a single character, like a letter, a number, a space, or a special character, um, like an exclamation mark or a hashtag. Um, so a char value is written in single quotation marks or single quotes inside those, whereas a string is written inside double quotes. So a string stores letters, numbers, and other characters, but it can store more than one of those characters. So it can, it can um, store words or sentences. Um, so basically a char is a single character, whereas a string can be words or sentences. Chars are contained inside single quotes, and strings are contained inside double quotes. Okay, so those are the data types available in C Sharp. Okay. Variables. So variables are basically um, a place that can store temporary data in a program. So variables are location that can store data in your program that you're going to use over and over again. So it's like a container that can store values within the program. So numbers or um, sentences or words. Um, so to create a variable, first you need to give it a name and then you need to specify its type. Okay, so variable declaration in C Sharp follows a specific, specific syntax where you state the variable type first um, and then the variable name. Now variables, it's important to give them meaningful names, so they shouldn't ever contain spaces. Um, and a good idea is just to follow something like um, the camel case method, so something like this. Um, where you have no spaces, but each new word starts with a capital letter. Okay, so we'll start with declaring the an integer data type. So firstly, we state the variable type, so int, which is short for integer, and then we give it a name, for example, my number. Okay, and at the end of that variable declaration, um, we need to end the line with a semicolon. Okay, so what that is doing is basically just declaring a new variable that's called my number, and it's of the integer data type. Now we haven't given that any value yet, and we can do that later on on another line. So we could go down to the next line and we could say my number equals five. And now we've assigned a value to that actual um, variable. Okay, so 
what we can also do is we can just declare the variable. So the, the type of variable it is, or the type, the data type that it is, give it a name, and we can assign a variable all in one line. So if we want to do that, then basically we, set, we can say int my number equals five. Okay. So rather than saying int my number, ending it with a semicolon, and then going down to the next line and saying my number equals five, we can just do it all on one line like that. Okay, so we can either create a variable without any initial value, or we can create a variable and give it an initial value on the same line. Um, if we create a variable like this and don't give it an initial value, but we go on to another line later on and say my number equals five and give it another value, then notice that we don't need to put int at the start of that line because we've already declared that this variable is of the integer data type, okay? All right, so that's how to declare the integer variable, an integer variable and how to give it a value. Now we'll look at strings. So strings can be um, you know, words or sentences. Okay, so to declare a variable that is of the string data type, we need to use the um, the keyword string to say what data type it is. So we say string, and then we give the variable a name, such as my message. Okay, so we can declare it on a line like that, and then again, we just like we did with the integer, we could go and give that variable a value. Okay, and for a string, that value whether it's a sentence or a word, is contained inside double quotes. Just like that. Okay, but just like we did with the integer before, we can do all of that on one line if we want to give this variable an initial value. So we could say string my message equals hello world and in that line with a semicolon. So we're, we're actually declaring the variable here of the string data type with the name my message and we're giving it an initial value all on one line, okay? So that's how to declare um, integers and strings. It's the same for floats um, as well. So make sure that you say what the data type is, give it a name, and then a value. Oops, I just forgot to end that double quote there. So just make sure you don't forget to end a string with the double quotes. Okay. All right. That's basically it. Um, one last thing we'll talk about in this video is variable scope. So basically the scope of a variable dictates where it can be used. So as I mentioned in the previous tutorial, classes and methods use opening and closing brackets. So this is a class here, All right? All of this is a class and inside that class, we've got two methods. We've got the start method here and the update method. So anything inside these brackets here belong to that method. Anything inside these brackets here, these curly brackets belong to that method. And anything inside these brackets here belong to this um, class. So everything inside those brackets is called a block. And variables can only be used within the block that they were created in. So if a variable is created inside a class, it can only be used inside that class. If a variable is cr created inside a method, such as the update method, then or it, it can only be used inside that method. So for example, if you create a variable inside this method here, the start method, it can't be used in the update method because they're two completely different blocks. Okay, however, if a variable is created in a class, so inside this class here, um, but outside of all of the methods on that class, it will be available in all of those methods in that class because those methods are in the same block that the variable is in. So for example, this variable here, my message, it's contained inside this um, class here called my script. So it belongs to this class. And because it's in the class, but it's outside of these methods, it can still be used in these methods. So it can be called on in these methods because these methods are also inside the same class, okay? 
Okay, and that brings me to public and private scope. So in code, you might see the keywords public or private, for example, up here, public. Okay, and those are known as access modifiers. So private variables can basically can only be used inside the file that they're created in. So that means that other scripts or code editors can't see or modify these variables, these private variables. However, public variables are visible to other scripts and can even be seen and modified inside the Unity editor, the, like the actual inspector panel inside Unity. So that makes it really easy to change variables, or to change values for variables right inside the Unity editor um, without having to actually change the values in your code editor, like this one, MonoDevelop. So to make a public or private variable, all you have to do is add the private or public keyword before the variable type and name when it's declared. So I've got this string here, my message, um, and inside that variable, there's a message, hello world, that string there. Um, so at the moment, it's just, it's just a normal, um, a normal variable, but I can make it a public variable by putting the keyword before public. So now it's a public variable called my message. Now, if I save that, I'll just delete some of these unnecessary lines here. If I save that and go back to Unity and I look at this script now, it's just updated. So I've got the script here that's the script that I was just working on in MonoDevelop, this script here. I have it attached to the main camera object in this scene inside Unity. So you can see the script there, my script is attached. But now I've also got my message. So I can actually change the message here inside Unity without having to go back to the code and edit that that value. So just to show you again, I'll go back to Mono Develop and I'll get rid of this public bit here. I'll save it. I'll go back to Unity and in a second it should update. Now it's gone. Okay, so I can't actually access that variable now. Um, the variable can be used in the game, but I can't edit the value of the variable inside the inspector. So if I go back and add public before that, and save, and go back to Unity. After a second, it should update, there it is. So that's the variable there. It displays a space between those words just to make it easier to read. Um, but that's the variable there, and this is the value. So I could say, um, so saying hello world, I could say hello there and hit enter. And now, oops, now that variable has actually updated. Um, so if we go back to the code, it's not updated in here, but anything that is changed inside Unity will override the code. Um, so if you change the value in here, it will override whatever is in the code. Now, this is it's really handy to make public variables in your scripts, um, especially with numbers. So if you have a value that's going to, you know, alter the movement of an object in your game, if you make um, that number, like a float value or an integer value, and you create a variable inside the script for that value. If you make it a public variable, then you can easily just inside Unity, just change the value right from this point here in the inspector. And then you can just test it and just see the changes in Unity straight away without having to go backwards and forwards um, between Unity and MonoDevelop to have a look at your script. So you can do it, you can change any of the values here inside Unity really easily just by making the values a um, public variable, or by making the variables a public variable. Okay, so that's it. That's how to create variables in C Sharp. It's basically an overview of the data types available in C Sharp and an overview of how to create public variables in C Sharp. All right, so that's it. Thanks for watching.